Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today as we get into the roundup and what is kicking off all across the football world. There's been tons of things going on today and a lot of perspective to share with you guys. So I think you guys are going to enjoy this video a lot, um, especially, especially in regards to a certain player. We're going to get into it. Before we do though... I'm going to keep you guys posted, obviously, with all the content on here. So make sure you are hitting the subscribe button. Make sure you're hitting the notification bell to be notified once I have uploaded. Do not forget to check out Shootout in the description. Content is coming back to there very, very regularly as George has sorted out his things. I've so Well, I'm in the process of sorting out my things. As I've said, you're getting a brand new setup here. So when that comes, hopefully in the next few days will be up and running so make sure you guys are there for that check out the socials they are on screen for you right now let's get cracking we're gonna start off this conversation as i've said there's a few things to talk about but we're gonna start off with conor gallagher conor gallagher good old conor has decided to speak and he said something in particular that's made me think and made me analyze and question his intentions so we're gonna get into it Let's get um, up and running with the exact words he said, the phrases he used, and we'll analyse it because some things need to be said. Let's get cracking. Here it is. Conor Gallagher, this is my club. I've supported them all my life, and I just want to do so well whenever I step onto the pitch in a Chelsea shirt. You know, a lot of you know me very well. I'm not the sort of guy or fan to come on and just go, ah, he's from Cobham, he's from Cobham. He's got to play because he's from Cobham. He's, he's proper Chelsea, proper Chelsea because he's from the academy. And because he's from the academy, he's got a God-given right to do whatever the hell he wants. No matter what, ah, he's got to start. That's not me. I'm not like that. I don't care whether they're from the academy or we've bought them. I want whoever is best for Chelsea, for our club, for the team. Whoever fits, whether you were born and bred at Cobham or whether you've come from Brazil or Serbia or France or China, for all I could care. I just want the best players in the Chelsea team. Conor Gallagher's a special case, though. Because we go back to, look, Rhys James is a clear example of someone who, well, Rhys James has supported Chelsea all his life as well. So that's, a, that's, that's one thing. If we bring up Mason Mount, who is now very, very much not appreciated in the Chelsea fan base, I think for clear reasons. Um, but we know he grew up a Portsmouth fan, and albeit Portsmouth were a decent team back in the day, at least under Harry Redknapp, and they won the FA Cup, and then they just fell off and disappeared and were never to be seen again. I don't know, where are they now? League One? League Two? I've not seen Pompey in flipping ages. I remember the fan. I don't know if... The, the ones that are old school will remember. Do you guys remember the Pompey fan that never used to wear a shirt and he's got tattoos all across his, uh, his body and he's got a beer belly and he's always at the games wearing like... Legend. Uh, but... <laughs> that shows how old school I am. But um, Mount was, you know, proper Chelsea because he's from the academy. I didn't actually grow up a Chelsea fan. He grew up at Chelsea, but was he a Chelsea fan? No, he's a Portsmouth fan. With all due respect. And then he went to Man United and then we saw what his dad said. And all that, and, you know, uh, story for a different day. We don't, we don't need to go back there. Uh, done. Right? He made his choice. But Conor Gallagher's words here, they mean something. Because I am in no doubt that Conor Gallagher cares about Chelsea. And wants to prove himself and wants to be the best. I, I have no doubts that he has that attitude, right? I don't question that. I don't question his his uh, what he gives or what he tries to offer or how much he puts into it or how much he works hard. I don't question that at all. I know he gives 120%. But that's not enough for me. I need to be able to know that you've got the talent as well. You've got the technicality. You've got the skills that are required to play 
in such a crucial position on the pitch, much like his in the middle of midfield. You are the engine, mate. You're the engine. You know, it's like a car. What happens when there's no engine? It doesn't move. You could have the best wheels, the best tires, the best chassis, the best windows, the best uh, inside spec. You could have the best leather on the seats. But if there's no engine in it, it's not moving. Much like, right, if there's no wheels, technically it's not moving either. You could try and put something else and maybe, maybe enough power from the engine might just scrape it along. You could stick some bricks on there, right? Maybe enough thrust from the engine might just push the car a centimetre, right? But if there's no engine, there's nothing to switch on. In football, the centimetres are exactly that. You can't have a functioning team without a proper centre mid or a proper midfield. Conor Gallagher's meant to be playing that role. Now, I've been questioning, and you've heard my critique of Conor, is he's not shown enough technicality, he's not shown enough prowess, he's not shown enough um, mental capacity to be able to think quick on the spot, find solutions and analyse exactly what you're going to do before you even receive the ball. I have no doubt about his work off the ball, but I have doubts in terms of his works on the ball. However, do you see how he played against Fulham? That was perfect. That was perfect. That's what I've been looking for. <laughs> That's what I want from Connor. So now it's not even a question of can Connor do it. It's a question of will Connor do it. Connor, I want you to be able to put in a performance like you did against Fulham consistently. Not every game. It's not going to happen every game. I understand that. Even Frank Lampard in his hey, they had a bad game or two. But that's it. A bad game or two. What? Not five or six bad games. A bad game or two. The rest were all consistent. As I've said before, what makes a player a great player, rather just compared to an average player, is the consistency. It's whether he can deliver against every opponent. How Conor Gallagher played on and off the ball against Fulham was spot on. He was going on the half turns, he was running into space, he was hitting the one-twos, he was quick with the ball, he was looking forwards, not sideways or backwards. I mean, everything we've wanted in Connor, he has finally shown against Fulham. I need that consistently, please. If I see a performance like that against Burnley, against Arsenal, against Spurs, consistently, I am in no doubt to be able to put Connor Gallagher in the starting eleven. Because on top of that, he has a special ingredient like the others don't have, which is he genuinely cares not just for himself, but about the club and the badge that he wears on the shirt. He's grown up a Chelsea fan. He wants to do well for Chelsea. He grew up watching Chelsea as a fan. He now plays for the club and he has the capabilities to do something about it. As a fan, still at heart, he's on the pitch being able to offer. That's unique. So I don't want to go down the route of, ah, oh, just play him because he's proper Chels. I need the quality. But if he plays like he did against Fulham, consistently, I'm happy with him. Please. Uh, what he said has really got me, like, when I, when I write off a player, I'm like, nah, just, just get him out. But when I hear Connor speak like this, there's a part of me now that goes, please, Connor, please, please. Please, flip and deliver. I want you to deliver. I am rooting for you. Please, please do something. <laughs> you know, I, I, I really, really, really want him to do well. I really want him to do well. But I'm not going to just go in blind faith and go, ah, no matter what happens, he'll be okay. Like, no, he's got to prove it. So, please, Connor, please, please. What you did against Fulham, keep doing it. That's all I ask. There we are. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree or disagree in relation to Conor Gallagher and what he has said and his performances? Let's get into the next thing, which is Pochettino decided to give Mudrik a gift. Gave him a gift. What did he give him? You'd think after scoring a goal, a goal bonus would be, I don't know, um, maybe a bottle or something. Maybe a nice, uh, you know, getaway. Maybe an extra bit of money on top of his salary. Maybe, I don't know, a VIP treatment somewhere. Pochettino did this. Pochettino's gift to Mudrik, his book, Brave New World, 
inside Pochettino Spurs from 2017. Now, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if this is a, a, a good gift, if I'm being uh, completely honest, um, because <laughs> this book was from when he was at Spurs, and he didn't exactly win anything at Spurs, so I don't think Mudrik has much to learn from that book, <laughs> if we're being completely honest. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. No, look, I hope there's a hidden gem in there about maybe developing young players or something that's going to motivate Mudrik and get him to see the bigger picture. But it seems like Pochettino's really taken Mudrik under his wing and he sees a lot of faith um, you know, being given into him and, and, and he sees a lot of potential in him. And, and I think he's working on him and he's trying to mould him bit by bit into the perfect winger. Let's hope it's going to work. I really, really hope it does. But yeah, that was his gift to Mudrik. Let me know your thoughts. Do you like that gift or not? I mean, I've not read the book, I'll be honest. I might actually read it just to get into Potter's head a little bit and see exactly what his thought process is. I think it's probably a wise thing to do. So if you haven't done that already, uh, I'm not being paid for this, but go and get Brave New World. <laughs> <laughs> Go and read about Podge. Now, let's get cracking into... There's a loan situation that needs addressing immediately. So we're, we're not going to waste time. Here it is. There are already calls for Chelsea to recall Andre Santos in January, which the club could do by activating a break clause in the loan agreement. Forrest also incur mutually agreed financial penalties for not playing Santos when he's fit. But at this stage, it is simply a situation to monitor and Chelsea are in regular contact with Forrest, Cooper and the Brazilian to provide support. Um, we have on top of that, of course, Nottingham Forest incur uh, mutually agreed financial penalties if they do not play Andre Santos when he is fit. Chelsea also have a break clause. So look, I'm going to be completely real. I, I am so desperate to come on here and tell you just cut the loan now. Because what Nottingham Forest have shown so far by not playing him for one minute is criminal. It's incredible. How, how have we not even offered him a start? And he's meant to be on loan. The wise thing to do is to keep tabs on it until January because the market doesn't open until Jan, so we can't exactly do anything up until that point. Keep your eyes on it. If he doesn't get enough game time up until January, just bring him back to Chelsea. Bring him back, we'll find him a proper loan. What's crazy is we actually had options for a proper loan, and that wasn't done. It wasn't done because we thought Premier League loan, Nottingham Forest, they're going to use him. Oh, nice. But, uh, to be honest, maybe the signs were there. Nottingham Forest decided to sign probably more players than we did. I think they're the only ones that have done so. So it's probably, probably a stupid loan to begin with. But it was the only Premier League available loan. And you think Premier League experience is going to work? Nottingham Forest are just not playing him. Forest, you've got to play him. Play him. <laughs> Stop waiting and play him. Cooper, what are you doing? Anyway, let's wait and see what's going to happen. If not, we just got to cut it. Cut it and then send him to Strasbourg. Come on, Strasbourg. <laughs> now, um, Reese James, we've got an update on Reese. Here it is. Breaking Reese James banned for one game and fined £90,000 by the FA. So that was in relation to the whole um, abuse. Anyth anything counts as abuse now in the UK. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> hi, he's abused me. Like, that's probably what happens now. You know, here's a fine uh, because he said hello. That's the way that it's running now. But um, apparently Reese James agreed. He acknowledged what he said. So he must have said something. Let's be honest. But he will not be playing against Burnley. The fine and the ban will apply to the Burnley game, which, to be honest, I think he's meant to be injured. I wasn't expecting him to come back for Burnley. I'm going to be completely honest. I said that his return date would be Arsenal. And it seems like that's still going to be the case. Um, if he does make it fit for Arsenal, that's an if. So, yeah, if he's serving the band against Burnley, great, FA. Cheers. Yeah, we'll take that. Because he wasn't meant to play anyway. Um, don't tell the FA. <laughs> Just don't tell them. Now, let me know your thoughts on that. Let's get into some topics that are happening elsewhere before we wrap up. Craziness coming out of FIFA. What have they done? Well, it's FIFA, and they're crazy. So they thought, why not we just get more crazy? Let's just act crazier. Let's do something insane. Here it is. Morocco, Portugal, and Spain set to stage the 2030 World Cup. To mark 100 years of the FIFA World Cup, first three games to feature Uruguay, Argentina, Paraguay at home. Opening ceremony plus rest of the event in host nations. All six qualify. 2034 in Asian or Oceania confeds. 
I don't believe what I've just read. I'm going to be completely honest. FIFA, what are you doing? How is it? Hang on, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got to check this again. Does this make sense? Morocco, Portugal and Spain have been offered the 2030 World Cup. They, no, well, no, they, they're going to get it, right? Fair play. I'm cool with that. Because Morocco, Portugal and Spain are all very close to each other. The Mediterranean between the two countries, um, Morocco and Spain, are not exactly that large. Trust me. It's, it's, it's quick to get in between the two, so it's fine. But... To mark 100 years of the FIFA World Cup, the first three games to feature Uruguay, Argentina and Paraguay, those countries will be playing at home. So they'll be playing in South America. And just because they get to play a game at home, all of those countries automatically qualify to the World Cup. What? How does that make sense? What God-given right have Paraguay, Argentina and Uruguay got? To qualify for the competition, unless have they already qualified? Um, World Cup qualifying isn't, no, the 2030 World Cup, what am I even saying? It's not even 2024. How have these guys been automatically qualified to the World Cup because they're going to be playing one game at home? So FIFA have gone, okay, now you know what? You guys stay at home for the first game, so you haven't even got to travel. We're making your life easier. And just because, right, you qualify for the tournament. How does that make sense? <laughs> I'm, if I'm England, I'm fuming right now. Any other country, I am fuming right now. I'm going, no, 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 hang on. Because they get to play one game at home, they're automatically qualified. Why? Because we're going to commemorate 100 years of the World Cup. If you were so bothered about commemorating 100 years of the World Cup, you would give the competition to those countries in South America. We would all go to South America and we'd play the World Cup there. Right? And yes, they would automatically qualify, and it would be taking away from Morocco, Spain, and Portugal. But if this was truly about the competition being 100 years old, that's what you would do. It's not. <laughs> it's a stupid idea. It's crazy. It's insane. FIFA, what are you doing? Morocco, Spain, Portugal, congratulations, because I think it's deserved and it's nice. I think the Mediterranean climate, I think those three countries are big footballing countries. I think it's going to work pretty well. Um, so I'm very happy with Morocco, Spain, and Portugal. Not a problem. But those three countries get in a pass because they get to play one game at home each. Be what? <laughs> what? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on that. Absolutely bonkers from FIFA. Absolutely insane. Now, 2034, because we heard that the Saudis wanted to host a 2030 World Cup. Now, they, they, well, they withdrew their bid or they didn't even bid. Um, much because it looked like Morocco, Spain and Portugal were going to get it. So, Saudi have decided to do something else, and let's get into it. If this is going to work. Is this, is this, is this going to work? It's going to work, surely. Is it going to work? You, see, you guys are getting... Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. Beautiful. I See, we, we got it up and running, people. Live recording, no edit. This is what you get. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman confirmed Saudi Arabia will bid for the 2034 World Cup. The, kingdom, the kingdom's desire to host the 2034 World Cup is a reflection of the comprehensive renaissance it has achieved at all levels. I just want to say, off the bat, Congratulations, Saudi Arabia, on winning the bid to the 2034 World Cup. I mean, we, we, we might as well. <laughs> we, we, we might as well. No, no, one, no one's going to compete. I guarantee it's going to be the only bid. Anyone that even thinks of trying to compete with the Saudis for the 2034 World Cup and are going to get a whole bid done with a presentation and this, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your resources, you're wasting your oxygen. You just don't. There's no point. There's no point. They've won it already. They've got, I don't know, spaceships being built that the stadiums are going to look like. There's just, there's no point. Saudi are doing everything right now. And they've got unlimited money to do so. Don't even bother competing. The 2034 World Cup will be given to Saudi. We might as well give the congratulations now. And look, I'm going to be completely honest. If it's as successful as the Qatar World Cup, I'm all for it. Because the Qatar World Cup broke a lot of uh, records, had a lot of people thinking it was going to be rubbish, and it turned out to be one of the best World Cups we've ever seen. So if, that, if Saudi are going to follow in that, then fair play. And for anyone that's actually going to say, oh, but no, we're going to be playing in 50-degree weather, but they won't. 
In Qatar, they didn't. It'll most likely be another winter one. And even if it's in the summer, trust me, they've got the capacity to aircon the streets if they want to. That's how much money they have. They can aircon cities if they have to, right? Don't worry. <laughs> it'll be 50 degrees and in your city it'll be 20. Not a problem. It's fine, right? You just got to set the temperature. Saudis can do that. So, it, look. Congratulations, they've won the bid. As far as I'm concerned, they've won the bid. <laughs> this is, there's no point in competing. Um, and to wrap up, let's get into this last bit of news. little quick thing to mention because I think it deserves some acknowledgement. Here it is. FIFA are expected to end the suspension of Russia from tournaments. Russia are expected to be allowed to play in the Under-17 World Cup in Indonesia, which begins on November 10th. Um, I, I just have to say, on this, I think it's the correct decision absolute correct decision and i think we need to bring some common sense back to the table here no matter what everyone thinks of a conflict right that's going on in that region at the moment but what do footballers like these guys have to do with that if you probably ask all of them they're probably all against what's going on and all against war as a whole so if we're being completely honest under 17 footballers under 20 footballers senior footballers have nothing to do with what's going on politically going on between war, that they're footballers. Let them represent their own nations as they are born and bred there and they don't have a choice to change their nationality, do they? So I, it's, I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, all countries have football federations. All countries take part. We have other wars going on ac across the world. We don't see anyone else getting banned. As far as I'm concerned, this is the correct move. For those footballers that deserve to at least represent where they are from, for their own sakes, I think it's the correct thing. So fair play. Fair play to FIFA, at least, for making one good decision. Because <laughs> FIFA are insane, uh, as we've proven earlier on. Let me know your thoughts down below in regards to everything that I've discussed. And I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. So make sure you guys are here for all the content as it drops. And like I've said, I'm going to keep you posted, not just in terms of the content, but the brand new setup and a few things that are coming to this channel that I think you guys are going to admire. If you've been here before and you've seen a certain feature that was on this channel before you might understand where things are going so keep your eyes peeled for what might drop in the next when's the 21st of october oh yeah that's where chelsea play arsenal isn't it that should be your clue i will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video thank you all so much for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell to be notified once i have uploaded smash the like button if you have enjoyed this and i will see all of you tomorrow check out the socials in the description too much appreciated see you tomorrow have a good one people in a bit take care and peace